everyone, welcome back. Uh, as you can see, things are cooling off here, but we're still filming outside and I'm really grateful for that. It's harvest time and not just for your vegetables but also for all the berries and fruits that are now readily available out in the wild. You know, every winter we go hiking and uh, we come across flocks of waxwings that are munching on frozen crab apples and all sorts of berries. And every year I tell myself, oh, we're gonna plant those uh, trees or bushes in our backyard to invite those birds to come visit us in the winter. And then of course I promptly forget. Um, so the other day I was reading an article about uh, types of bird food and the author suggested collecting all the berries and fruit now freezing them and then giving them to birds later on. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. Unfortunately, we missed the winter for all the wild blackberries, raspberries and blueberries that we had in our garden. We ate them, birds ate them, even raccoons love them. So what I'm doing now is I'm just walking around and collecting what I see birds on eating later on in, the, uh, in winter months. And I'm gonna freeze this stuff and then put it out later when it's really cold outside. Uh, one suggestion when handling the berries, please use gloves and leak-proof containers. Rick is wondering if the presence of a chimes and like a spinning post might deter birds from visiting his bird feeders in his backyard and how far away from the feeders he should place these noise making devices. Hi Rick. While I can't quote any definitive scientific studies on the subject, rest assured that neither your large wind chime or your spinner post will keep birds from coming into your yard. Both of these items are fun additions to one's yard. Having said that, their sudden appearance in one's yard might initially make your local birds a wee bit skittish, but as soon as they learn that they're not harmed by other item, they'll quickly habituate to them. And who knows, some claim that these smaller, softly tinkling wind chimes might even serve to attract curious birds to one's yard. Not sure I buy that. Anyway, put it this way. If putting out a loud wind chime or a humongous wind spinner in your yard actually keeps birds away, then airports, yacht clubs, and other places afflicted by nuisance birds would be installing them everywhere. Even those fake owls might fool the birds for three or four days, but as soon as they learn they're harmless, they totally ignore them. So enjoy your chimes, your spinners, and your birds. Another thing that you can harvest right now is milkweed seeds. Actually, it's a little bit too early on my property. I didn't have a very good milkweed season, but I wanted to bring this up now because maybe in your area, on your property, milkweed is ready to be harvested. So how can you tell that it's ready? So locate one of these uh, pods on the milkweed. They probably have several of them. And if you see that the pod split open naturally and the seeds inside are brown, then it's ready to be picked up. Mine wasn't open, I just opened it myself to see what color the seeds were and they're still white. So I'm just gonna let it be, let it um, get ready naturally and I'll come back in a week or so to check on it. So if your milkweed is ready, just pick the pods. You can just snip them right here, bring them inside, lay them out in the cardboard, let them dry for a week or so, then pick the seeds, put them in the brown bag and store them somewhere cold so they are ready for the next year. I guess we've all had a roommate who was a little bit braver or crazier than us and somehow persuaded us to do something that we would never consider doing. And as a result of stepping out of our comfort zone, we learned a thing or two, or maybe even got ourselves into a huge trouble, which is all part of the learning process. And guess what? The same things happen in the avian world. A new study that involved house sparrows shows us that they learn in the same manner. Some house sparrows are braver than others and by placing them in the same room with more timid sparrows, the timid house sparrows become 
a little bit braver and less afraid of things around them. The study uh, placed uh, unknown strange objects next to food sources and some sparrows had no problem eating the food whereas the others were too afraid to get anywhere closer to that food. But after spending a week or two so with the reckless, uh, fearless, brave sparrows, the uncertain ones did become a little bit bolder and did approach the food. So this is actually really good news because it shows us that some birds are capable of adapting their feeding habits because of the changes to their habitats due to human presence. In my view, wind turbines have gotten a bit of a bum rap when it comes to killing birds. Some of my friends, for example, simply cringe at the fact that I, as a bird lover, have acted as a consultant on the side of companies wanting to construct wind turbine fields. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't feel that such projects should be built everywhere, such as right on the migratory pathway of low-flying birds or near the nesting sites of endangered birds. But if you ask folks about what wind turbines do to birds, they often say they kill millions of birds every year. But the truth, based on scientific studies by experts, is that about six birds only are killed per turbine per year in the U.S. More recent estimates by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service range from 140,000 to a half million birds killed per year. Compare that to more than 2 billion birds killed by free-ranging cats each year and 100 million to a billion dying in window collisions in the U.S. annually. Nevertheless, the less birds killed by green energy turbines, the better. And Norwegian researchers are seeing some success with painting just a single blade black. It apparently cuts down on motion blur and allows the bird to detect the turning blades better to avoid collisions. The seven and a half year study showed that turbines with one blade painted black had around 70% fewer annual sea eagle fatalities compared to unpainted control turbines. The scientists caution that this solution might be species specific and even site specific. More studies in the works, but the results so far are encouraging. Have you ever seen a red-headed woodpecker? They do visit bird feeders, and when I checked Cornell's website, it showed me that during their breeding season, they have been spotted in our area. I just haven't seen them. Anyway, um, I've got some really bad news because as of now, the red-headed woodpecker is on the endangered list in Canada. Since mid-70s, their population has decreased by over 50%, leaving only about 4,000 birds in Ontario and Manitoba. But as of now, a federal recovery plan created by the Ministry of the Environment will issue a $1 million fine to any company that is trying to destroy the red-headed woodpecker's habitat. Uh, the plan also includes introducing restrictions on what can be done in the areas where the woodpeckers breed and nest. With such rapid intervention, the Ministry of the Environment is hoping to slow down down the decline of the woodpecker and eventually bring the population numbers back up. Goodbye for now, I'll catch you in two weeks.